Welcome to the fourth section of the Mastering Cassandra video course. In the last section, we made a high-level design of the application. In this section, we'll learn about the core components of the popular Spring framework. We're going to start from the Spring core framework and understand what dependency injection is about. Then we'll get familiar with Spring Web MVC and the closely related Spring Security frameworks. Then we'll tap into the basics of Spring Data Cassandra, which lets Java very easily access a Cassandra database. Finally, we'll talk about Spring integration. First, let's take a look at the Spring Core Framework. In this video, we're going to introduce the Spring Core Framework. We'll also learn about dependency injection to make programs loosely coupled. In parallel, we'll build an example program to explain the use of Java annotations thus avoiding the tedious work with XML. We can go to Spring's official site at spring.io. Under the umbrella of Spring, there are in fact many sub-projects covering different aspects of Java development. But for the time being, we'll focus on the most fundamental Spring core. At its origin, Spring was made as an alternative way to tackle the old notorious problems of enterprise Java beans. The core concept is to adopt dependency injection to come up with a loosely coupled and easy to maintain programming model for enterprise applications. We're going to build a sample application to facilitate our understanding of dependency injection. We'll build a non Spring version first. Create a new Spring starter project. Name it Chapter 41 and change the group to com.cassandrawebtrader and the artifact to Chapter 41. This wizard basically helps us build up the Maven configuration file. Click on Finish. Then create a new class named Client1. Click on Finish. Client1 is a POJO class, and we'll add a public method called SaySomething without any parameters. This method just prints a message to the console and does nothing else. Then we refactor Client1 by right-clicking and selecting on Refactor and then Extract Interface. Enter the interface name as Client. Select the Say Something method. Click on OK. Now Client1 is refactored with an interface called Client. Create another class called Server. Click on Finish. We add a private attribute called Client of the Client Interface and instantiate it immediately. Then we create a public method, callClient, which simply calls the client's SaySomething method. So when callClient method is called, the SaySomething method of the client attribute will be called to print out a message to the console. We go back to the application's main class, Chapter 41 Application. Here you'll see the Spring Boot application annotation. This helps us to manage all the tedious configurations and lets us concentrate on writing the program logic. We need not touch on it for the moment. In the main method, create and instantiate a server local variable of the server class. Then we call the call client method of the server variable. All right, let's run the program. In the console, the log shows that it's a Spring Boot application with a Spring application context created and the message this is client1 is printed. So, this is the non-Spring version. Well, let's just modify the code to make it Spring-based then. Go back to the main method. Change the first line to get the Spring application context to the CTX variable. At the end of the method, we close the application context. Remark the server line. Declare the server variable again, but this time we get the server instance from the Spring application context. Basically, Spring maintains a pool of objects called beans in its application context so that we can retrieve whichever object we want from it. The first parameter is the bean ID of the server instance, and the second is the type of the class. Next, we need to modify the client1 and server classes. Go back to client1. We add an at component annotation here. 
at component indicates that client1 is a component to be turned into a spring bean. It tells spring to create an instance of client1 in the application context. Similarly, we add at component annotation to the server class. Then we remark the private line, and we just declare the client attribute without immediate instantiation. We add another annotation at resource to instruct Spring to inject a bean of the client interface type to this client variable. It makes a huge difference in program design. The server class doesn't tightly couple with the concrete implementation of the client1 class anymore. Instead, it just refers to the interface client, which is a contract that the server uses to communicate with whatever classes that are abided by this contract. Apart from the at resource injection approach, there are other choices, such as at auto wired, at inject, and so on. Please refer to the reference link for further information. Let's run the program again and see the magic. The console is the same, but now we have a Spring based version instead. That's a wrap for this video. Next, we'll learn about how to use Spring to develop web applications.